What do you think about the use of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's, and I think we can say perhaps a, to a certain extent, successful use of Hindu nationalism to further his political agenda? Yes. It's a political question, but I will still take it on because it's necessary. Look, I am inspired by Vivekananda, this modern giant that I talk about. And Narendra Modi is also inspired by Vivekananda. So this is our commonality. <laughs> we are both inspired by the same spiritual giant. In fact, Narendra Modi wanted to join the Ramakrishna order, become a monk. And those people said, no, no, work in society. And that's what he's doing. And as this young boy, just young man just mentioned, he's doing a good job. Because look, you see, this is, you must, I'm, I mustn't enter into politics, but I must do this. We have not seen a prime minister or leader of India of this nature. Everyone else was either kind of biased a little bit or kind of there for their personal interest or personal glorification. Here for the first time we find an individual who has got absolute zero percent, you know, corruption in his system. His mother lives in, lived, used to live in a hut. His brother is selling, you know, bananas, you know, in the street. They don't get any privilege. He doesn't take any privilege himself. The salary he was earning, he was giving it all away. To the to girls' institution for free education, nothing for himself, nothing. This man, zero percent corruption. I don't know a single leader in the world today who can really compete with Narendra Modi in, on this issue. Absolute clean cut person. Now, he inherited a system which is full of tremendous corruption. India has been listed as one of the most corrupt nations in the world. You can't get anything done in India unless you put some money under the table. You want to send your child to a good school or top school, well known school like Eton in India? put money under the table. If you try and put money under the table here, they'll throw you out. They'll imp imprison you very likely. So whole of India is, is, is kind of infected with corruption because of the last government. 70 years of horrendous rule, allowing all corruption to kind of creep up and take over the, India, uh, take over the nation. That's why we're in this. Look, let me give an example. After the Second World War, UK was demolished, infrastructure destroyed, Germany was destroyed, Japan was destroyed. Hiroshima, Nagasaki, destroyed. They all fell well on the backwaters. We were not destroyed. We got independence, same time, 70 years ago. And once we got independence, these nations have risen up and now ruling the world economically and as a civilized society. Both all these three, civilized society, human dignity, preserved, egalitarian society. And they were really prospered in the last 70 years. And after being devastated, we were not devastated, we in fact we were given independence. And after 70 years, we were right in the bottom of the league. Most corrupt nation. You see, the reason why I get upset is this. Here you see, people who have a lot of money keep grabbing more and more money, and people with no money struggling to survive, eking out a living, don't have clean drinking water. 40% of Indians today, Hindus in India, don't have clean drinking water. No sewage, no toilets. How can you call yourself a civilized nation? Everybody else has moved on and we all seem to have gone down. And the answer is corruption. Previous government, very blunt, previous government. So here is Narendra Modi rolling up his sleeves and saying, okay, I'm going to stand against corruption. I will do all these kind of fantastic, kind of very, very difficult task of really kind of attacking this corruption in the system. And when you do that, do you think the corrupt people are going to let him get away? Because they lose their livelihood. They still want to, you know, control them. So they are out to really demolish him. They are all ganging up against him to try and demolish him, destroy him so that the next election in, in 2019, they get, get him kicked out so all the corruption can re-enter India. I'm telling you, if Narendra Modi is killed or leaves the scene, India is back in the dark ages. It's a very horrendous story. So what Narendra Modi did is this. He recognized that the reason why India, Hinduism has survived in a single civilization over 5,000 years, all other civilizations have come and gone. Hinduism has survived for five, lived lots of ups and downs for 5,000 years because this nation focused on higher values rather than material gain. All other civilizations, Roman Empire, whatever empire, they say, okay, let's rule others, let's control uh, Alexander the Great, whatever, they control other people. Everybody went out to conquer other people, control other people. Position, property and possession was the name of the game. Here, this civilization never went out to conquer others. They were very powerful. No, not bothered. Think of higher things. So they are focusing on a spiritual ideal rather than a material ideal or a secular ideal. Because of that, they survived. But after the after independence, this, this foolish government decided to adopt a secular model that does not suit that nature, the nation, doesn't suit their temperament. They so say we become like modern Westerner with Nehru. They destroy, demolish the spiritual dignity. Look, I can teach Hinduism at Eton, the top school in the country. I can't teach Hinduism to a single Indian school. You know that? With the compliments of Nehru. 
They demolished the spiritual dimension of India and brought in this kind of half-baked secularism which has produced such corruption. So this poor Narendra Modi is rolling up in slave. Let us refocus our attention on the spiritual dimension, the spiritual backbone of this nation, the spiritual undercurrent of this nation to revive it, to refresh it. And that is the poor guy is doing it. But all these forces, look, they have been there embedded in the system for 70 years. Even within his own party, I'm sure there are lots of corrupt people embedded in the system. So it's very difficult for him to pull them out like a huge virus inside the system. And it's very difficult to fight this virus, but he's doing his best. And I wish him well, because if he doesn't succeed, we are in big trouble, I'm telling you. This is why to revive and refresh, redignify the nation, focus on the spiritual aspect rather than the secular or the material aspect that we are now focusing on. That is what he's trying to do. It's not easy.